Hey folks, welcome back to the Pipecat channel. Larry here again. In my uh, search for the ultimate axe, the uh, most preferred tone, the, uh, the best balance and beauty and price, I have uh, surfed the gamut, basically. I've, I've, I've uh, had a lot of guitars in here that I have loved and many that I could have done without and many that I started out loving and decided later that yeah it's not really getting it and then uh, others that I started out like why did I buy this piece of crap only to find out later that it became one of my favorite guitars so in that spirit of exploration let's call it I have another unveiling for you tonight this one uh, I'll give you a quick backstory. I won't chew your ear off this time. Um, basically, my last guitar video was about my uh, my Squire Paranormal Stratasonic, and um, that was a very versatile and stunningly beautiful guitar. And I took it down to practice with me, and I showed it to the guys, and everybody loved it. And they were like, "Wow, the, so many different tones come out of that." True, but uh, in the course of time, I realized that the sound I was going for in with, with the mix that I was looking for with my bandmates and the sound that they make, it wasn't quite gelling with it for some reason. I found overall that its tone tended to be a little bit nasally, a little thin here, a little too thick there, and I did not like the volume and tone pull-up controls and what they did. Sure, they gave you more options for tone, but for instance, one very unpleasant surprise that everybody finds out when they get this guitar that guitar is when you pull up uh, when you pull up on the series versus parallel you lose the bridge position pickup so if you're in series versus parallel and you're in the center position that's where it's supposed to be when you do that you're playing along and you knock it down to the to the bridge pickup and gone everyone who reviews that guitar will tell you that but that's by design it's just an unfortunate you know, design flaw that apparently they didn't find a way around. But if you think about it, if you're going to run series of two single coil pickups and then you switch down to select just one of them, you're out of the series circuit now. Why have it set for series if you've only got one pickup? You need two pickups to have a series. So that's why that happens. Now, oddly enough, when you go up to the neck position pickup, it worked but you lost that series feel. Anyway, the guitar had confusing controls and the tone was a bit nasally, not enough power for me. Those, those fake P90s that are in it, they're, they're Fender creations, they're single coil Fender creations. They look like P90s, they're supposed to behave like them, but the output is considerably lower. Those are probably about 6K ohm a piece. And, um, uh, What's the other? What's that other term that they use? I forget. It's not just the impedance that, that determines the power. It's, um, you know what it is. I'm sure by the time I edit this video, I probably will have something on the screen telling you what it's called. But uh, the, uh, the guitar got returned. I sent it back. I got it through uh, Sweetwater. And uh, another good story about Sweetwater, because I spoke highly of them last time, and I will again. I, I'm not affiliated with him in any way. Like I said, I'm not an expert anything. I'm not even a business, okay? I'm just a purchaser sharing findings with you guys. Sweetwater treated me really good the first time when I bought the guitar. When I went to return the guitar, I had had it more than 30 days. I was outside the return window. And uh, I contacted them. I said, listen, you know, it's like brand new, and it really was. That guitar was in better shape when I returned it than it was when I got it, and I am not lying. I put so much setup work and polish up work into that guitar that whoever takes that one out of the box next time is going to say, wow, it comes from the factory professionally set up. It really played like a dream. So I told them that, and they said, well... Do you still have all the original stuff that came with it? I go, yeah, two Allen wrenches, you know, and some candy in a bag. What else do you need? They said, well, as long as you have all the original packing materials and all the literature that came with it and all that good stuff, we'll have to think about it. I said, well, let me sweeten the deal. 
I want to trade up. I want to buy something more expensive with the return money from that squire. And they said, ooh, well, that, you know. <laughs> and uh, they went all Lord Farquaad on me, and they said, uh, you know what, yeah, okay, well, yeah, maybe we could do that. So they, they made it contingent upon the uh, overall condition of that guitar when it was returned. They said, if it's as good as you say it is when it comes back, we'll just slap some new labels on it and whatever, and we'll call it a return. Um, I hope they sell it as new, because basically that thing is new. You know, I mean, it had less play on it than something that was hanging in Guitar Center for a month. So they let me have the deal. The deal. They let me do it. They approved my return. They said, yeah, it looks good. Okay, let's do it. And I bought something else, something that I think will be closer to what I was looking for initially. And I would like to open that box with you today, because the thing showed up today. I have not opened it, and we're going to do the Yabo again. Yet another box opening. I promise you I won't take as long this time as I usually do. Let's get started on that right away. Unboxing. That be the box. And here you are. The outside box looks really good. I'll just tell you that. Ah, what's this? My invoice. I will tell you, the Squire Paranormal Stratasonic cost me $429.99 plus shipping. Okay? This guitar retails for $499 even. So it was a bit of an upsell. They were happy to get that extra 70 bucks. And of course, they threw the shipping on top of that too. So as you can see, packed the same way as the Squire was. Spray foam. This one came, ooh, in a triangular sub box. And it's from Epiphone. Okay. No, uh, no case candy like Squire in that box, but it may be in this box. Let's try this one. Let's go to the guitar box. Mm -mm -mm. I like to do these like this because I like for you guys to see the whole purchase experience if you're going to buy one of these and try it right out of the box. So let's take the top off this. Okay, this is what the packing looks like on the inside. Do not discard. Use that card. Valuable and important accessories in box. Well, there's the case candy we're talking about. Let's find it. Nice little foot piece here to keep it stable. Not bad. That'll go right to the big box. Some of that imported air. All right, now let's take her out and see what we got. You have. You have something of a cardboard cradle in there. This neck is better supported than the Squire was when it showed up, that's for sure. Fitted cardboard. You have an inner, oh look at this, nice Epiphone sticker and all that good stuff. Several of them actually and some tags. We'll, we'll go through that afterwards. This is one that I've wondered about for a while. It is a reissue. So it's supposed to look like something from a long time ago. And this is what we got. Take a look there. The peekaboo headstock. Woo! Take a looky. The bikini bottom. Spongebob's fingerprints all over. We'll keep going. 
You know I had to make a SpongeBob joke. It's a bikini bottom. Here's uh, the guitar. What we've got here. Ah. Nothing in the prom dress. Little blurb there. You have questions. We have answers. Larry's got a guitar. He is now broke. All right. This is an Epiphone Wilshire P90s reissue. It's got P90s. Hopefully these are more real because this is going to be closer to the Gibson design than Fender probably came. <sighs> Stuff on me. I knew when I bought this that this pickguard cover was beginning to peel. It was already peeling in the pictures. So let's, uh, let's have a look at the guitar like we always do for any kind of shipping stress. This one is going to be more important on because it's a set neck. Okay? If this has a crack at the neck, well, if you speak Russian and saw my last video, you'll know what that means. I'm looking... I'll look with you on the screen. Initially, no stress cracks that I can see. It's a nice clean neck joint, isn't it? The finish in the back, as you can probably see, is quite pristine. I'm going to look along the edges for any impact crushes. Nothing that I can see. The neck is all gloss, as you can see, it's not satinized, which I don't mind. And here's what the back of this looks like. Okay. Can you see the serial number? Maybe. But that's, that's what you get. Handcrafted in. There you go. So we know we can blame QC6 if there's anything wrong with this guitar. Now, right out of the box, the head is in great shape. I love the design. This will become my second black guitar. I had a black Stratocaster some years ago that I told you that I traded off for that black Flying V, that Samic Flying V that I have. There is a video about that in there. Uh, and I've missed having a black guitar. So I saw this, and it, they offered it in black and in red. I think there's also like so, sort of like a tan or a blonde somewhere in there, but I, mean, I was never turned on by that color. Uh, I might tell you that color. I have other guitars that color, but I did not have another black P90s type guitar. I wanted one. So here we go. Out of the box, it looks great. Nothing missing from the knobs. The output jack is... I can't turn it with my fingers. Not loose. The knobs all feel... Pretty well seated. They do not pull up. They're not designed to. They turn quite well. Lots of clearance between the bottom of the knob and the paint. Lots of clearance. Can you see it? Kind of high. I could probably push those in a little if I wanted to. But why bother? The knobs are of pretty good construction. They're not real, real cheap. They, uh, they're about medium guitar construction grade. <laughs> you notice something different about the rhythm and treble switch? Well, it's right side up to the viewer, not to the player. It's right side up to the audience. I've seen others where that's the words are upside down, even though they're in the same position. Switch feels good. Really even breakdown. Nothing soupy in there. Pretty good. So, let's check and see how the action is right out of the box. Almost in tune. A rough tune. Listen to that guitar resonate.
unlike the Squire, whose place this is taking, this guitar is resonating throughout the back of the body where I'm holding it down here, the bottom. The whole guitar is resonating real strong with those strings. And it's a tight resonance. In other words, there's not so much hardware in this thing that there's plenty of places where it can vibrate and rob tone. That's the thing. You get a guitar with a lot of push, pulls, bells, whistles, even ones that have circuit boards inside them. You have a lot of hardware, and if you have a tightly constructed body, well, that won't matter much when the wire and, and, the, and the metal hardware inside is, is excessive. It robs tone. Sometimes the truss rod can rob tone. One, one thing that I like to do is I like to do this. Right up to the mic. Truss rod seems nice and tight. Let's see how straight that neck is. Take a look down that neck with me. I'm going to think of that. I don't know about you, but I don't see any relief. And I don't see any back tension. That's as straight as an arrow. And just from holding this guitar, which I haven't even fretted yet, just from holding it, the action right here is dreamy. Dreamy. Now, you saw how close to being in tune this was. And you see how this is kind of loose down here. I gotta wonder if this wasn't a return like my Squire. Because this feels like it's been set up. What I like, look at the bridge. I really dig that kind of bridge much more than the Squire had. The Squire had the wraparound. It was an Epiphone bridge, but it was a wraparound, pre-compensated bridge without movable uh, string saddles. So you had to trust what was already built into that piece of metal because you couldn't move it. Oh, yeah, you had a little bit of leeway with, you know, moving that bridge slightly away or slightly up, but only, only as long as a, as a set screw that big. You know, you didn't have much. This, you've got all the freedom in the world, same that you normally have in that kind of bridge. So I've got movable bridge saddles. I've got a, uh, I've got a configuration like I like. I mean, I like something close to a Les Paul or an SG configuration. That's what that is. And I love Epiphone guitars. Let's see how this thing plays. I'm going to give it a little bit closer tune. Can you hear that? The first fret, let's, let's check for any string buzz. Nothing on the, well, I'm always weak holding it down. If I do the strings individually, you don't hear that. No buzz. The nut slot height. Not bad. Not bad. And I don't see where anybody has had to cut into that. You can usually see little tool marks if somebody has had to readjust the uh, the string slot heights in the in the nut. The nut seems to be. I mean, it, it feels like bone. It may not be. I'm sorry, I don't have the specs in front of me. But um, second fret. Pretty good so far. I'll have to play it for a while to find any, you know, real dead spots, any high or low frets, or hit it with a fret rocker. These frets, they look to be about, about medium. They're probably not as small as those Squire frets were. I don't believe they're steel. They have that sort of a bronzish tinge in them that indicates they might be nickel of some sort.
You listening with me? So uh, let's not waste any time. Let's plug this sucker in. I'm going to use I'm going to use I'm going to use the uh, the stage right 15 watt all tube amp. I'll, I'll eventually be using like an L cord for this, but for now, we'll do this. I'm not going to put my uh, I'm not going to run the the uh, the Hotone step up lift up pedal with it. I don't want to cheat. I want the guitar straight into the amp and see what kind of tones I can get out of it. Again, I'll be playing it without a strap, and with my belly, that's uh, that's problematic. Let's get some test volume. Well, that makes a difference. Let's turn the pickups up. Hmm. Thought I was detecting a grounding issue. I think it's just single coil hum. Let's noon everything. Bass noon, middle noon, treble noon, reverb on about three o'clock. Tone, noon, uh, master volume, noon, Gain down. I'm guessing these pickups are going to be kind of hot. This is the uh, the bridge position pickup. tell you that I'm already in love with this thing. This is reactive to my kind of touch, whereas that Squire was not so much. I'm going to stop comparing this to the Squire. The only reason why I'm doing that is because I returned the Squire for this, plus $70. So uh, let's see if it was $70 worth of improvement. Those sound like P90s. So that's clean on the bridge position pickup with everything nooned. Let's try the neck position by itself. I'm pegging my mic out. I'm going to turn my mic down a hair. You know what? I'm going to turn my amp down here. Yeah, that mic is pegging. I am going to drop that a bit. Hello. That should do it. Sustain. I mean, I love the output of this guitar. I love the feel. I love the weight. This has got to be about six pounds. It feels amazing. The neck is a nice kind of a standard C shape, which I like a lot. Let's try the middle position.
Notice the difference in volume between the low E and the high E. Very comparable. And that's good. That means I probably won't have to mess with the pickup height very much. Again, let's go back to the neck position pickup on clean with everything nooned out. I have not set that up for the tasty tone that I'm looking for. I'm setting it up for the straight out of the box, straight into a first amp without anybody looking at it tone. And I'm already liking it. any volume between the strings on the neck position. This is the bridge again. Again, low E volume, high E volume. Very comparable. That's going to cut through a mix, I can already tell. So now let's try our parts and see how they are. I'm on the uh, bridge position pickup. I'm going to try turning its volume pot down. Wow. Watch how much I turn it compared to how much volume it gains. That's off. Wow, it's strangely most reactive near 10. You don't you don't generally see a lot of that. Usually if it's a if it's a logarithmic pickup, you'll see it uh, have most of its reaction down near 1 or 0. This one's got most of it near 10. Let's see if the same happens on the neck. About the same. Seems seems pretty linear to me. And let's try the tone pots. Same. Seems fairly linear to me. Let's try the the neck tone pot. You gotta kind of be picking it to here. They're all about the same. I'd say they're I'd say they're all fairly linear. Uh, if they are logarithmic, I'm not catching that effect very much. They're very controllable. If I'm in the middle now, middle pickup, strong chord. This is the middle pickup with the bridge tone pot rolled all the way out. And now here it is, halfway up. All the way up. Pretty linear. I would say halfway up, it's got about half of its tone back. Let's do the same with the neck pot. Neck tone. Ah. That's funny. The neck. The neck tone part is the only thing so far that has felt a little bit linear to me, sort of. But isn't it funny how when you roll the, the tone all the way down to zero, you get something added? Watch. Here it is on 10. There's about five. And here it is off. You get that sort of a swell.
Your first impression of this. If you could feel this the way I'm feeling it in my hand, uh, its reactivity and playability is pretty phenomenal. In fact, it's been kind of unfair that it's not been pointing at the guitar for most of this video. But uh, the original, uh, the original uh, soft plastic covers are still on the pickups. They look like they'd never been peeled off, but I suppose they could be replaced easily enough if anybody ever played this before me. The um, the plastic on the pick guard uh, is uh, is beginning to peel, but humidity alone could probably do that. If there's just one little, you know what I mean? If somebody lifted one corner, the whole thing's going to come off. But I can tell you that this guitar is an absolute keeper right out of the box. I'm loving the tones. Let's try missing with the tones of the amp a little bit. So I'm going back to the bridge position. Let's try... <laughs> Take a bit of volume out, it really is quite loud in here. I'm gonna put the tone up. The tone is about on seven now. The bass I'm gonna leave at about six. I'm gonna roll the middle out to about four. And the treble. I like it a little trebly. So this is kind of where I have my setting most of the time. Let's try my new amp settings with the middle position. Pickups are a little bit hotter. They sound like P90s. They are true P90s. Uh, they're probably even a little hotter than the humbucker-sized P90s or P94s that I have in my spalted maple Firefly semi-hollow FF338. Um, I love those because they sound like P90s to me. These sound a little more like P90s than those do. A little more Gibson influence. Don't forget, Epiphone was a company before Gibson was. I think, right? All right, let's try the cheese. the bridge position pickup on full cheese. Let's try the neck position. Oh, I like that tone. Kind of adds its own little scream there.
Oh, copyright strikes all over the place. Middle with cheese. I don't usually do the middle with a lot of cheese. But sometimes you're surprised by... Oh, there is a nice little mix between the two. How different is the middle position from the neck position? Let's see. That's the middle. Here's the neck. Ah, they're somewhat similar. As you can imagine, the difference between the middle position and the bridge position is going to be a lot more dis you know, uh, distinctive than that between the middle position and the neck position. So that, in a nutshell, peeps, and it does buzz a lot, but I got fluorescence all around me over here. Um, that is the, I believe it's a 2022 model, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's when this came out. In fact, you know what? The serial number will tell me. Yep, 22. This guitar is, uh, was manufactured last year. I don't know when it was actually reissued, probably a little bit earlier than that. <coughs> Excuse me. But this was uh, supposedly from brand new inventory out of uh, Sweetwater. And uh, I like everything about it so far. There's a couple of things I might just adjust. I might actually put a touch of relief in the neck to lean it forward just a hair, not much at all. The reason being, I like to pick kind of hard sometimes, especially when I'm playing live. I get carried away with myself. And if I, if I do that, I like the string to have the full ability. But strings don't vibrate side to side or up and down, as you think they do. They vibrate in a circle or an ellipse. It's an elliptical. It's, it's, it's a rotating ellipse. So it starts out doing this and then begins to do this and then this and then this. It's a rotating ellipse. And you want the distance between the string and the unplayed frets above it to give it enough room to make that full, when you make that big pick or that big chord hit, you don't want it to suddenly fret out and you lose half the volume of the power chord you just did. Especially if you're playing clean, believe it or not. Playing clean, you hear that because it, it emphasizes the sound of the, the string hitting, you know, buzzing somewhere. Whereas with the dirt, you can kind of hide it a little bit. But that, um, this guitar, the look, the style, the fit and finish, the, the setup, and of course the tone, is everything that I hoped it would be. I did not play one of these before I ordered one. I can see where this thing has been peeled halfway up, and there's actually... You know what, let me take this off. Let me show you the true color of the pick guard. It is a brown tortoise shell. Looks to be a single, looks to be a single cutout ply, but it's fairly thick. Get this stuff out of here. Okay. No more curly plastic for you, Epi. In fact, let's even take them off the off the pickups. Not because they're it's doing any damage being there or muting any of the tone being there, but because it's fun to peel off. And you guys can watch me do that. Oh, what fun it is to peel the plastic off my pups. Ugh. There you go. No more plastic on you. Let's see, is there anything else on a switch anywhere? Nope. No, but curiously, it's already got cat hair on it. So I guess I know who started peeling that cover off. Marshall's about big enough to hold this. Oh, yeah. Let's check the fret ends. I'm going to be real scrutinizing. Mm. There's one that's just a little edgy, but not sharp. Right there, that, that, that 10 fret. A little edgy, but not sharp. Going all the way up to the top. Hmm. The 22 fret guitar, and the frets do end right at the bottom of the cutaways. You're not playing over onto the body at all. The cutaways are pretty deep. And you notice that it's symmetrical, like the SG, not like a Strat. 
it's kind of, uh, I guess you could call it kind of Wilshire, you know, uh, Epiphone, Wilshire is kind of the answer to the, to people who like the shape of a Strat and like the symmetry of an SG. But um, I dig it. I think it's cool looking. Take a look at the color of the pickguard. I'll try to get the reflections out of there. Kind of neat, huh, with the little Epiphone, uh, you know, devil trident in the middle there. And a close-up of the bikini bottom label. Trying to get that in there. Kind of cool. Uh, nothing wants to focus. No. Maybe it is focusing. I just don't have my glasses on right now. I can't see shit. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to go ahead and install the strap locks on this. I already have a nice strap for it. And um, I'm going to get jamming. So that is the uh, that is the 2022 Epiphone Wilshire P90 reissue. It has a couple of uh, brothers. Uh, what is the Crestwood, I think, and the and the uh, what's the other the Cornet. Um, the Cornet is a single P90 version of this, you know, which sounds pretty good. I've heard it. I don't know if they moved the position of that P90 at all to compensate for the fact that there aren't two pickups. But I know that it's very versatile. I've heard people play it. I've watched a lot of videos on that. And uh, and the other one, the uh, it, it, I think it's called the Crestwood, right? That's got two because it also has a nice big tremolo system down here. Nice vibrato system. Uh, a fairly uh, a fairly uh, period accurate vibrato system. This uh, pickup cover, I will tell you this. Can you see the pickup cover? Can you get a close up of it? I don't even know if it's going to focus on that. I hope it is. That is sharp they did not they did not slope that away they didn't bevel it or slope it away they left it square and sharp that might be something that i might end up going around and hitting just to take the edge off it i don't know if that's the original design the way it was but um this one is and you notice that the tortoise shell is not overly figured it's very very subtle it's not uh, it's not a crazy you know you're not seeing paisleys in there it's uh it's designed, I guess, not to interfere too much with the look of the guitar being dark like that. So I'm digging it. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, rollout video of my Epiphone Wilshire. I'm going to put this baby down. Only for a moment, mind you. Then the moment's gone. Yeah. So, you know, the... Uh, the continuous gear acquisition is probably going to continue for the rest of my life, however long that is. But if I'm 190, you know I'll still be doing guitar rollout videos. Thank you guys very much for watching this one. I'm going to try and keep this one shorter than the average video, but I think I've probably blown that away by now. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will talk to you guys all soon. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, enjoy the late summer. Late summer here in New England has begun to cool off appreciably. And I can already feel the day is getting shorter. I know when I wake up in the morning now, it's still kind of dark out, which is a bummer. But uh, with that, though, comes the fresher, cleaner air to sleep in at night. So that's been kind of good. So, guys, take care of yourselves. Be kind. And um, pay attention to what's going on in the world and see what you can do about it. Okay? It's got to start at the individual level. But it's very important that we all talk to each other. So I'm not going to get political. I'm just going to say good night. Thank you very much. Thanks for visiting the Pipecat channel. And if you haven't already, then throw a like on it and subscribe. Take care.